What is up guys, how's it going? My Visuals here and we're back for another YouTube tutorial. Today we're going to be covering one of my favourite topics to do. It's such an important technique to use when out on the field. Anywhere you go, you definitely want to be doing this technique and the technique we're going to be doing today is time lapses. But not just any ordinary time lapses, we're going to be doing day to night time lapses. A step by step guide of how I personally do it. Again. I don't know if this is the right way, but it works for me. So let's get straight into it. So let's go. All right, so step one is cameras. What camera do you use? For all my time lapses I've done, I've been using the 1DX Mark II. It's a fantastic camera. However, I must stress, it does not matter what camera you use for this. At least it has manual mode or AV mode. All right, step two is additional equipment you're gonna to have to use. I'm gonna be using one of these guys, a shutter remote. They are amazing. You literally just plug it straight into your camera, set the settings you want, and let it roll and you can just leave that running the whole time and let the camera and the shutter remote do the hard work. All right, step number three is where do I shoot this and what time do I shoot it at? All of my time lapses in the past have been during sunset. Personally, I think this is an amazing time to shoot because of the golden lights, the way you can see the sun coming all the way down to the horizon and then slowly the nighttime will come out. But sunrise will work as well, but you definitely want to choose either sunrise or sunset. So a really good example is my last trip to Hong Kong. We hiked all the way up to the peak. I set my tripod up, set all the settings and just left it and we saw the sun dip below the horizon and then immediately the whole city came to life with the street lights, the neon signs slowly, slowly glowing and you saw all the hundreds of skyscrapers lighting up. So I recently did a day tonight in Tokyo. We got onto this rooftop, Connor and I, James, we set up the tripod. So we picked this spot because of how iconic the Tokyo Tower was and we knew from seeing it from previous nights how the Tokyo Tower did light up at night. So that would be a really good transition to get on camera. All right, so let's go through camera settings. So we're using the 1DX Mark II with a 16 to 35. We turned the lens all the way to 16 so we could get that wide landscape shot and then we punched it into AV mode. Punched it in. We changed it to AV mode. All right, so for those who do not know what AV mode is, it's called aperture priority mode. It's my go-to setting for when doing a day to night time lapse. All right, so what this enables your camera to do is to lock into an aperture so you can set it to 2.8 throughout the whole duration or f4 or f5.6. Any aperture you want, you guys can set it through AV mode. So while the camera is locked onto that aperture setting, the camera will actually automatically change the shutter speed according to the settings and the environment you're in. It's normally measured off your lighting conditions. All right, so next step is to plug this guy into your camera. I've attached the link below of what one I, of what one I use. Uh, this is the, I don't even know what it is. It has no name, but I've put the link in the description below if you wanna check out what one I use. So the settings on this are really simple. You just wanna set the interval time to about seven seconds. Put the shutter count to unlimited so the camera will just constantly roll until you stop it yourself. Oh yeah, and don't forget to switch off your sound on your remote because the most annoying thing is you've just clicked go and you've heard that beep and it will go for about two hours. Make sure all the settings in your camera are set to the environment you're in. So that's the shutter speed, the aperture, and you've got all the settings on your remote correct. And just plug that in and click start. A quick tip is set your focus manually because I've done it where I focused on a point and then for some reason it's shifted and then my whole time lapse has been blurry. So lock that focus, switch it to manual, and then you won't have to worry about that. All right, so the next step is to sit back and relax and wait until your time lapse is done. You decide how long the time lapse will be. I personally do it for about an hour, an hour and a half, but it really does depend on how long you want your time lapse to be. So as well, it does depend on what you're shooting. So if you're shooting Milky Way stars, it will obviously need to be left on for hours and hours to capture that trail of stars. But if you're shooting sunset, you could probably leave it around an hour and a half, two hours to get that full day to night look. So when you've decided to stop the time lapse, pull out the SD card and let's head to post-production. All right, so the next step for post-production is to transfer all of those time-lapse files onto your computer, create a folder, get it all organized, and then open up LR time-lapse. So when you open up LR time-lapse, it does look quite daunting at first, but 
I thought the same when I first opened it. There's so many different things going on, but I'm gonna go through as clear as I can, step by step, what you should do. The best thing about LR Time Lapse is that you can download a free demo on their website for Mac or PC. The first 400 frames are completely free. So if you wanted to do a, a longer time lapse with over 400 frames, you're gonna to have to pay for the full version. But as soon as you buy that full version, you can have no limit whatsoever on your time lapses. You can do two hour time lapses, five hour time lapses, even 10 hour time lapses. But the free demo is definitely a good starting point just to get to know the software and just to practice until you want to go to that next level. But I'll leave the links in the description and you guys can check it out. So once you've opened up LR Time Lapse, click on the left hand side, select where you saved your file and it will load all of those individual clips in the main frame. So as that's loading up the whole sequence you've created, you'll see each individual frame has information about it. So the ISO, the shutter speed and the aperture. So the first step is that you want to click the top left corner which says keyframe wizard. So once you've clicked keyframe wizard, the number of keyframes will come up. Preferably I normally choose four or five, but it does depend on how long your time lapse is. So as you can see from this example, I'm scrolling all the way to the right hand side to 20. And on the left hand side with the preview of my time lapse, these little blue dots will appear. And these are your keyframes. But this does depend on how complex your time lapse is. If you've got a lot of change in light in your sequence, definitely choose more keyframes to edit with. If not, if you've got a very simple time lapse, you can even choose two keyframes. But for this example, we're gonna choose four keyframes. So a keyframe is the individual frame you will be selecting to then edit in Lightroom. All right, so once you've done that, you wanna click save, open up Lightroom, and then click the drag to Lightroom button over your library settings in Lightroom. This will then import all of those sequences and wait for those to import. So as we mentioned earlier, we're making keyframes for this sequence. The reason for this is if you click on the bottom right hand corner where it says filters, select LR time that's keyframes, all of the keyframes you've selected will be waiting there. So for this example, with the Tokyo Tower, we've chosen four individual frames to edit. So we've got one from the daytime, the blue hour, as soon as the Tokyo Tower starts to light up and when all of the city lights are on. All right, so we're gonna wanna start with a daytime shot to edit first. Normally I would apply my presets. However, for this example, I'm just gonna do some basic color correction. So as you finish the first grade, completely copy and paste that onto your second frame then tweak the second frame to how you like it, and then do the exact same, copy and paste that setting onto the next frame. Adjust the settings slightly, and then do exactly the same, copy and paste that setting onto the next frame. And you're gonna to wanna to do this until you've got to your last frame. We wanna to stick to one consistent theme and grade throughout the whole time lapse, so that's the reason why we copy and paste the settings on each individual frame. So once you've done that, click G on your keyboard, select all of the frames, go to metadata, and click Save Metadata to Files. The next step is go back to LR time lapse and click reload. This is where the magic will happen. So once this is loaded, you can now see a lot more information has come onto the screen. So that's the great thing about LR time lapse. You will have no flicker in your time lapse shot and all of these individual numbers are counteracting with each other to create one seamless time lapse. So the next step is to click auto transition, then click D flicker and then click save. All right, we're nearly there, hang on tight. Last couple of steps. The next step is to go to Lightroom, go to the bottom right hand side, go to filters and click LR time lapse full sequence. And this will show all of the sequences and all of the frames you took for this time lapse. Select all of them, go to metadata and click read metadata to files. This will take about 10 minutes to do. This is all of the information the software has produced and it's injecting it into each individual frame. So slowly you will start to see all of those four different grades you did being applied to each individual frame of the whole time lapse. So once this is done, we're gonna to wanna to export these into JPEG, create a new folder, and let's jump into After Effects. All right, so once you've got After Effects open, we're gonna to wanna to click Composition, New Composition, and we wanna keep the frame rate at 23.976. So this is your standard 1920 by 1080 frame. We're gonna to wanna to then go to Import, Import Multi Files, and go to the folder you've just saved all of those JPEGs to. Click on the very first frame at the top, click options and click alphabetical order. And then drag this new sequence into your new comp. So next step is we're gonna scale it down to about 29 to fit that 1920 by 1080 frame. And we're gonna pre-compose it and name it comp one. All right, and time for the last step. Once you pre-compose your file, apply a warp stabilizer so the whole time lapse is nice and stable. Let that render out. And that is your day to night time lapse. I'm off the bed now. <sighs> Guys, I really hope that made sense. Let me know if you had any questions at all in the comments below. 
and I'll be replying to any questions you do have. And if you haven't, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate you guys for watching this video and I will see you on the next one. See you later, guys.